Welcome back to the Sunday Project. Well, June 30 is the federal government's deadline for institutions to join the National Redress Scheme proposed by the Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse. It allows survivors to seek an apology and compensation without going through the courts. Tonight, we can reveal that the scheme has suffered a major rejection from the Jehovah's Witnesses, whose church was heavily criticised in the Commission. In November, 50,000 Jehovah's Witnesses gathered in Melbourne for their international convention. But outside the stadium, former members were demanding answers from Australian church leader Terence O'Brien. Four people in my family were abused as children. Why are you letting it happen? So where are you staying? Why are you letting this happen to children? It's worse than the Catholics. Despite the impressive turnout at the footy stadium, there are fewer than 70,000 Jehovah's Witnesses in Australia. Yet, their own records show there have been more than 1,800 victims of child sexual abuse involving 106 members or associates of the church. And the Jehovah's Witnesses didn't see fit to refer one of those cases to the police. The Royal Commission, which wrapped up three years ago, thought 514 alleged abusers within this small church were worthy of police investigation. Stephen Umthank grew up as a Jehovah's Witness in Victoria's Gippsland area. He's been fighting for some kind of justice for 40 years. I was 12. My abuser was a elder. He rose through the ranks in Australia to become one of the leaders in Australia. Straight after the abuse, within the first week, my local body of elders wanted to meet with me. I thought that they knew about it and they were going to help me. I hadn't told anybody at that point. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't about that. I had been accused of smoking cigarettes. That night, um, I received a whipping from my father and that was really painful because I was still sore from being raped. When elders do investigate, they insist on evidence from two witnesses before finding the case proven. The Royal Commission said this showed a serious lack of understanding of the nature of child sexual abuse. You see, if someone who comes to you and says, I was sexually abused, but because there's no two witnesses, they don't, you don't accept it. You don't make that finding. They're left in a very difficult position, aren't they? We, we don't disbelieve a person who makes an accusation. That's why we investigate every accusation brought forth by the elders. Yes, but if there's not two witnesses, you don't accept it, do you? Because scripturally we're not... I know. I'm able to. I know. This is an organisation that is based on secrecy and isolation. So it's an organisation that sees themselves separate to the laws. As a lawyer, Lisa Flynn has represented many survivors of sexual abuse at the hands of the churches. They don't uh, actively report crimes that they have become aware of to police or any other secular authorities. Um, they have their own internal mechanisms to deal with things such as child sexual abuse um, and these mechanisms completely fail victims. I, I would have been seven-ish, seven roughly I would say. Simon Philpop lives in Yass, not far from Canberra with his mum Rita. So I went into the bedroom, into Simon's bedroom and I noticed this boy, this teenager with Simon, in Simon's room with the door shut and the curtains drawn. When the elders became aware of what had happened, two of them paid Rita a visit. Remember, my dear sister, gossip is like a pillow with feathers in it. Once you break it open, you can never get all the feathers back in again. There was no real, what can we do to help you and your family with Simon? What, what can we offer you? There was none of that, it was just, OK, we're going to sort it out. We'll go and talk to the person and you must keep quiet. Do not talk to anyone about this. Instead, Rita went to the police. Well, that made them very unhappy because now they were being spoken to by the police and I was not supposed to talk to anyone. Not that they ever said don't talk to the police, but just don't tell anybody. They had to get rid of me. They would tell you otherwise, but disfellowshipping is a great way to silence people because if you're disfellowshipped, the faithful brothers and sisters will not talk to you. 
and anything you say will be questioned anyway because you've left Jehovah. He or she can choose to be no longer an active member of the congregation. I understand that. Well, it's a pretty cruel way of dealing with someone, isn't it, who has suffered sexual abuse. I could only repeat what I've said, Your Honour. No, that it's cruel, isn't it? To take away, by reason of the rules that you impose, all of their social structure, that's cruel. Last year, the Prime Minister directly addressed the institutions who had not joined the National Redress Scheme. All they're doing in not joining this is doubling down on the crimes and doubling down on the hurt. And so to them, I say, who have not joined, join. Do the decent thing. Do the right thing. Do the honourable thing. But this latest news will come as a shock to the Prime Minister and abuse survivors. In response to our inquiries, the Jehovah's Witnesses Australasia gave the project this statement. The religion of Jehovah's Witnesses does not have the institutional settings that the Voluntary National Redress Scheme is designed to cover. Therefore, the Ministry for Families and Social Services has been advised that Jehovah's Witnesses will not join the scheme. 40 years after the event, Stephen's alleged abuser was finally questioned by police. But he won't be prosecuted because of his failing health. And I understand he's in his 90s, he's frail, and um, the law on those matters might not be fair, but I also understand his health conditions and I have to accept that. So far, the Jehovah's Witnesses have concentrated on toughing it out. Why are you doing this to the children? 1,006 perpetrators under your watch. You're the leader. Well, really, I, I would just appreciate an, like an apology and, and ad admitting to sexual abuse in the church. Personally, it would help me with closure on decades of my life. Um, for other people, a lot of people just want to be recognised. They want them to recognise that something bad happened. They want them to say sorry. Maybe remember that next time one of them knocks on your door. The cruelty of it all is breathtaking. And believe it or not, there are hundreds of groups who are still yet to sign up to the redress scheme. The federal, state and territory governments are threatening to remove the charitable status of these groups if they don't make the right moves to sign by June 30. Now, there's a full statement from the Jehovah's Witnesses on our website.